Dear students, um, in the 20th century literary criticism, after I.R. Richards, we place Frank Raymond Lewis, F.R. Lewis. And he also has contributed to the field of criticism and has also put serious efforts to define the purpose and social significance of literature. So just like I. R. Richards, Frank Raymond Lewis, that is F. R. Lewis's criticism is also considered as a practical one, but in a different sense. While I. R. Richards was concentrating on poetry, F. R. Lewis's interest started in poetry and gradually moved to short stories or fiction and then to philosophical writings and finally to moral literature or moral uh, uh, writings in, 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 in English language. And F. R. Lewis is remembered as a critic who strongly believed that literature carries culture so through literature or by teaching literature you can transmit culture from one place to another so he considered literature as a carrier of culture and he consi is considered as a practical criti critic because also because of the fact that he was also a, a, a professor and just like I.R. Richards, he also had made plenty of experiments in the, cl in the classroom itself. So let us see the different, uh, the various contributions of uh, F.R. Lewis. And we will be giving emphasis to the concept of literature and criticism put forward by Frank Raymond Lewis, F.R. Lewis. And in your textbook, there is a correction in the content page. The spelling of F. R. Lewis is wrong. You know the printing. The, I think it's a printing mistake. It's printed as L. E. W. I. S. It's not Lewis. It's Lewis. F. R. Lewis. And this is the spelling. Okay. So make that correction in your textbook as well. So this is uh, F. R. Lewis. He lived between 1895 to 1978. And uh, his concept of literature and criticism. F. R. Lewis, in full Frank Raymond Lewis, he was born in 1895 and uh, died in 1978. He was an English literary critic who championed seriousness and moral depth in literature and criticized what he considered the amateur belletrism of his time. So he was a very serious critic of, uh, you know, if you surf through the internet or through textbooks uh, that are associated with F.R. Lewis, uh, this line will pop up repeatedly. You know, F.R. Lewis as a critic who brought seriousness in English literature. And what this seriousness is, we will see. Okay. So seriousness and moral depth. These were the two major concerns of F.R. Lewis. Uh, not just in his criticism, I think in his teaching career also, he, he was trying to look at uh, literature as a very serious activity and also literature as something that is related to the morality of the society from which that literature is coming. So, <coughs> he, um, uh, he, he, he stood for the seriousness and belletrism means the study or composition of essays particularly on literary and artistic criticism that are written and read primarily for their aesthetic effect. So literature shouldn't be read simply for its aesthetic effect. And that is the definition of seriousness as you know that was, that was suggested by uh, F.R. Lewis. Suppose you have a poem and when you write about the poem, it should be serious in the sense it shouldn't be 
it shouldn't be written simply to get some aesthetic pleasure instead it should be a serious enterprise and it should it should talk about or this writing should be very serious in the sense that it should look into the moral fabric of the society from which the space is coming okay so bilateralism was there and uh, he 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 stood against uh, the bilateralism that was popular at his time okay അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ കാലഘട്ടത്തിൽ ഈ വിക്ടോറിയൻ കാലഘട്ടത്തിൻ്റെ ശേഷം ഉണ്ടാവുന്ന പല തരത്തിലുള്ള ഇഫക്റ്റുകൾ ഒരു പക്ഷേ ഈ ഈ സാഹിത്യത്തിൻ്റെ വായനയിൽ അല്ലെ സാഹിത്യ മേഖലയിൽ എഴുത്തിൻ്റെ മേഖലയിൽ നിരൂപണത്തിൻ്റെ മേഖലയിലൊക്കെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അപ്പോൾ അതിനെയൊക്കെ തന്നെയും വളരെ സീരിയസായി കണ്ടുകൊണ്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അതിനെ ഒരു തരം വിമർശനത്തിന് വിധേയമാക്കിക്കൊണ്ട് കേവലം ഈസ്റ്റിക് പ്ലഷറിൽ എത്തുക എന്നതിന് അപ്പുറം ലിറ്ററേച്ചറിന് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ക്രിറ്റിസിസത്തിന് തന്നെ വലിയ ഉത്തരവാദിത്തങ്ങളുണ്ട് എന്നുള്ളൊരു പറച്ചിലായിരുന്നു എഫ് ആർ ലെവ്സ് നടത്താനായി ശ്രമിച്ചത് അപ്പോൾ അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഇന്നത് സീരിയസ്നെസ് ആൻഡ് മോറൽ ഡെപ്ത് ഇൻ ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ഹി ക്രിറ്റിസൈസ്ഡ് ബി ലിറ്ററിസം വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഇസ് ബി ലിറ്ററിസം ദ സ്റ്റഡി ഓർ കമ്പോസിഷൻ ഓഫ് എസൈസ് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർലി ഓൺ ലിറ്ററി ആൻഡ് ആർട്ടിസ്റ്റിക് ക്രിറ്റിസിസം ദാറ്റ് ആർ റിട്ടൺ ആൻഡ് റെഡ് primarily for their aesthetic effect so when you write about an art piece or when you write about a literary uh, literary piece it should it shouldn't be simply uh, looking at the aesthetic uh, aesthetic effect the work is generating in you instead it should be a very serious activity where the reading or the critical reading uh, uh, you know should touch on the moral aspect of the work of art that is under scrutiny okay then in 1932 he founded scrutiny a quarterly journal of criticism that was published until 1953 and is regarded by many as his greatest contribution to english letters so what is his english letters english aksharangal ennadana apram english bhashaki ennal arthathilana okay appo endana scrutiny enna oru 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 quarterly journal idheham അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ നേതൃത്വത്തിൽ രൂപപ്പെടുത്തി ഓക്കെ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് എ നയൻറ്റീൻ തേർട്ടി ടു ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് എ ക്വാർട്ടേർലി ജേണൽ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് എ ജേണൽ ഓഫ് ക്രിറ്റിസിസം ദാറ്റ് വാസ് പബ്ലിഷ്ഡ് അൺ ടിൽ നയൻറ്റീൻ ഫിഫ്റ്റി ത്രീ സോ ഫ്രം തേർട്ടി ടു ടു ഫിഫ്റ്റി ത്രീ അത്രയും നാൾ ഏകദേശം ഇരുപത്തി മൂന്ന് വർഷം അല്ല ഇരുപത്തി മൂന്ന് വർഷം അല്ല ഇരുപത്തി ഒന്ന് വർഷം ഇരുപത്തൊന്ന് വർഷങ്ങൾ കണ്ടിന്യൂസ് ആയി പബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തിരുന്നു ഈ സ്ക്രൂട്ടിണി എന്ന അല്ലെ നയൻറ്റീൻ തേർട്ടി Yes, yes. So, scrutiny is considered or this journal is considered as a major contribution um, of uh, F.R. Lewis. Okay. And Lewis believed that literature should be closely related to criticism of life and that it is therefore a literary critic's duty to assess works according to the authors and society's moral position. Okay. So, Lewis believed that literature should closely uh, relate to, to criticism literature should be closely related to criticism so he considered literature and criticism as two uh, uh, you know mutually existing entities okay they contribute mutually because a criticism is related to life okay so a literary critic's duty is to do what a literary critic's duty is to assess works according to the authors and society's moral position so the critic should be very serious as we have seen in the previous slide the critic should be very serious and he shouldn't follow the billetrism that was popular okay and now he says criticism is not simply a reading instead it's a it's a it's a moral activity okay the element of morality is coming there so the duty of a literary critic is to assess a work according to the authors and society's moral position endu tharam moolyangal aanu oru krithi munnotu vekkunnathu ennadine kuriche krithyamayi visagalanam cheyuga ennadum endu tharam moolyam aanu oru eluthukaranum adodoppam oru samoohavum munnotu vekkunnathu ennadine kuriche adhaayathu moolyangale adisthanapaduthittulla oru criticism ennalla nilayilana ഇദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ എഫ് ആർ ലിവിസിൻ്റെ കോൺട്രിബ്യൂഷനുകളെ പൊതുവിൽ നമ്മൾ കാണുക എന്ന് മനസ്സിലാക്കുക ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ലിവിസ് ഇസ് ക്രിറ്റിസിസം ഇറ്റ് ഫോൾസ് ഇൻ ടു ഫോർ ഫേസസ് ഇസ് ഇസ് കരിയർ എസ് എ ക്രിറ്റിക് ഓർ 
is ideas in criticism it can be grouped under four categories okay and in the first phase he was very much influenced by t s eliot and you know who was t s eliot you i think you have already studied tradition and individual talent by t s eliot but more than that he is a leading poet in the 20th 20th century so he was influenced by t s eliot especially t s eliot's poetry and he gave attention to english verse so english verse is actually poetry padyam so um in uh, new bearings in english poetry that came in 1932 he attacked english late victorian poetry okay so victorian poetry hope you remember our discussion in the <coughs> in the in the uh, you know in our uh, ah in the third semester where we located the the evolution of english prose and there we talked about victorian era okay so the victorian era was severely criticized by or the victorian poetry in particular was severely criticized by lewis and this criticism can be seen in books like the new bearings in english poetry which came in 1932 by f r lewis and in this work or in this phase f r lewis was a very strong supporter of english verse and he thought that the uh, early uh, the early modern english poetry is highly creative highly serious and it carries a moral value and he compares the early 20th century poetry with victorian poetry and he attacked the late victorian poetry uh, for the lack of uh, uh, so seriousness and moral uh, concerns okay and he proclaimed the importance of the work of t s eliot ezra pound then gerard manley hopkins emphasizing wit and the play of intellect rather than late romantic sensuousness so there shouldn't be a late you know and and here you can see the politics okay so lewis was that kind of a critic who loved poetry and he thought Uh, that that uh, uh, you know the romantic sentiments or emotional or sensuous poetry should be shouldn't be read <laughs> instead um uh, you know you should be very serious and uh, uh, the the poem you write should should come from the society or evolve from the society so that when you read a poem that shows you uh, the the so the society's structure and also the the moral position of the society from which the the piece is coming so it's it's quite natural that he 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 proclaimed the importance of uh, early 20th century poets and writers like t s eliot ezra pound g m hopkins etc and he said these poets are really creative and serious and they contain moralistic uh, uh, you know they 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 contain moral moral values in 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 that sense and uh, Uh, they such poems should be read and uh, romantic sensuousness should be avoided okay then in the second phase uh, of his career as a critic that is in the late 1940s his interest moved towards novels okay so in the great tradition he reassessed english fiction proclaiming jane austen george eliot henry james and joseph conrad as a great novelist of the past and d h lawrence as their only successor okay so in 1940s his attention moved from or shifted from poetry to novels and now he says in in, in works like in the great tradition okay uh, he assessed the importance of uh, uh, novelist realism realism kadannu varunna oru samayam okke aanu especially ee parna jane austen de samayavum okay aa arthathil oru realist fiction like okke nilkuna oru samayam kudiyana ennathu manasilakkuga so uh, you can't you can't blame f r lewis for uh, for for his for his for his position uh, where he takes the side of you know uh, writers like jane austen or george eliot or in poetry on the side of t s eliot and others okay 
So Jane Austen, T. S. Eliot, George Eliot, Henry James, Joseph Conrad. Hope you remember Joseph Conrad. Namal um Chinua Chebe Vai Chapol Namal Joseph Conrad and Ecurcha Kore Sam Sarajano. Glass session will poyon the Noka. Uh so Joseph Conrad. All these novelists are really great in his they belong to the great tradition of English fiction. And he considers D. H. Lawrence as the only successor of this great tradition. Okay. About the second phase, like very much. And he stressed the importance of these novelists. He stressed the importance these novelists placed on a reverent openness before life. So this is what is significant here. A reverent openness before life. A jivata yadarthate, a deapole avadi pikinanilla. Sramangal, Jane Austen, George Eliot, Henry James, Joseph Conrad, and this, this, this tendency of openness uh, is visible in late in, in recent writers like D. H. Lawrence, and he considers D. H. Lawrence as the only successor of this great tradition. Okay. Then, after 1955, other novelists, notably Dickens, Tolstoy, engaged his attention. Anna Karenina and other essays and Dickens, the novelist, were written with his wife. Okay, so from poetry, his attention came to uh, uh, to, to 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 novels and uh, and and if you look at these works, Anna Karenina and other essays, then Charles Dickens as a novelist, all these works were written with the help and support of his wife. Okay, then his his range is perhaps best known in the collection. The Common Pursuit, which came in 1952. Then, Dr. F. R. Lewis, he was a professor and an academic critic who is regarded as one of the outstanding figures of new criticism in England. Okay, so when you read new criticism, the traces of new criticism is visible in F. R. Lewis's works as well. Okay. And sometimes his criticism is called a philosophical criticism, at, as it is, <coughs> as, as as it is the revival of philosophical criticism, whose great supporters were Sidney Wordsworth, Coleridge, Shelley, and Arnold. So it is uh, the the uh, you know Philip Sidney, William Wordsworth, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, P. B. Shelley, and Matthew Arnold. These you know some of them are poets but at the same time they uh, they are also known for the philosophical writings they had or or, or 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 in the field of criticism for their critical thought okay so some people believe that fr lewis actually belonged to this tradition okay the tradition of philosophical writing that was st uh, that is visible in writers like philip sidney william wordsworth samuel taylor coleridge p b shelley and matthew arnold Okay, these are the philosophical tradition. And some people believe that, or sometimes F. R. Lewis, Dr. F. R. Lewis is also uh, you know, considered to be uh, a figure or a, or a thinker or a writer or a critic who belong to that tradition of philosophical writings. And it places poetry on the highest altar of truth and teaches to grow poetry as an abstract quality. So in F. Lewis we see uh, poetry as poetry as a supreme form of truth and he promoted poetry. And then in the third phase, his writings and concerns were focused on social and educational issues. Okay, so in the third phase, uh, uh, F. R. Lewis's concern was more on education, uh, educational issues and social issues. And in the final stage, that is in the fourth stage, he published books like The Living Principle, English as a Discipline of Thought, and Thought and Words and Creativity, Art and Thought and Lawrence, and such philosophical writings. Okay. So, uh, from his, um, uh, from his, interest in poetry he shifted to novels okay and then to education and social issues and then the cultural the cultural aspects in language or how um, how uh, language can be used as a tool of culture okay 
എങ്ങനെയാണ് സംസ്കാരത്തെ വഹിക്കുന്ന സംസ്കാരം വഹിക്കുന്ന ഒരു സംഗതിയായി സാഹിത്യത്തെ കാണേണ്ടതെന്നും ഏത് അർത്ഥത്തിലാണ് ഒരു സംസ്കാരത്തിൻ്റെ വാഹകർ എന്നുള്ള അർത്ഥത്തിൽ സാഹിത്യത്തെ പ്രൊമോട്ട് ചെയ്യപ്പെടേണ്ടതെന്നും സാഹിത്യം വായിക്കേണ്ടതെന്നും സാഹിത്യം പഠിപ്പിക്കേണ്ടത് എന്നും എന്നതിനെ കുറിച്ചിട്ടൊക്കെയാണ് പിന്നീടുള്ള സ്ഥലങ്ങളിൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് കാണാൻ കഴിയുക ദ ഫൈനൽ സ്റ്റേജ് ഓക്കെ ദ ലിവിങ് പ്രിൻസിപ്പിൾ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ആസ് എ ഡിസിപ്ലിൻ ഓഫ് തോട്ട് ഓക്കെ so he he comes to the general concerns or uh, you know I, he he becomes a promoter of english okay english literature and english life then thought words and creativity art of thought in lawrence It, you know, and there he talks about uh, uh, dh lawrence but the first book i have mentioned here is really significant you know english as a discipline of thought english as a discipline of thought endu parayna arthulla pusthakangal kathayikku varumbo ഈ പറഞ്ഞതുപോലെ കൾച്ചറൽ റൈറ്റിങ്ങിലേക്ക് ഒരു പക്ഷേ കൂടുതലായി വരുന്നു എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഓക്കെ സോ ഇതാണ് ഈ പറഞ്ഞ ഈ പറഞ്ഞ നാല് തരത്തിലുള്ള മേഖലകളാണ് എഫ് ആർ ലേവിസിൻ്റെ നമ്മൾ പൊതുവിൽ അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ ഈ ഈ ക്രിട്ടിക്കൽ ഒരു 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 ക്രിട്ടിക്കൽ ഫീൽഡിലുള്ള അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ ക്രിറ്റിസത്തിൻ്റെ ഫീൽഡിലുള്ള അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ കോൺട്രിബ്യൂഷനുകളെ കുറിച്ച് നമ്മൾ ആലോചിക്കുമ്പോൾ മനസ്സിലാവുന്നത് ദൻ ക്രിറ്റിസിസം the concept of criticism and the concept of um, literature